Concern about the launch of SpaceX's Starship rocket in Florida could damage the space agency's launch infrastructure. NASA wants SpaceX to ensure that the plan for the Starship rocket launch will not put important property at risk or no Starship launch in Florida. Is SpaceX in big trouble? Here comes the answer. SpaceX Starship is something unprecedented in the world. It's an absolute technological marvel. This complete rocket consists of the booster stage below with the sleek-looking, state-of-the-art Starship spacecraft on top, which is constructed with a specially formulated stainless steel body. And simply put, it's the tallest and most powerful rocket ever built. Plus, it's reusable, which means a huge savings on launch cost and more money for, say, lunches, lunches, launches. As a result, to make Starship real is indeed a feat. Put technical difficulty aside, regulation and red tape is another problem. The SpaceX CEO recently admitted, It's something that we should be worried about is that the rules and regulations get more and more every year. Right. In the past, war has wiped away bad rules and regulations. Right. But also, we, we prefer not to have war right. as the means of, of getting rid of rules and regulations. Right. In the absence of that, what happens is there are more laws and more regulations every single year and eventually we won't be able to do anything. Right, right. <laughs> uh, so we do need to be cautious about uh, over-regulating uh, and having too many rules and regulations, basically stopping uh, innovation and, and actually ultimately limiting the advancement of civilization. This has obviously had a huge impact on SpaceX Starship. The first, the FAA, who delayed nearly a year to make a decision to launch Starship. Now, the FAA gave SpaceX a tentative approval when the launch plan passed a key environmental review in June, but with 75 required changes to the mission profile that must be completed before the license is handed over. To solve that problem earlier this year, Elon Musk decided to build another launch pad in Florida. Unfortunately, more difficulties coming with that. NASA's worried that failure of the immense and unproven rocket could almost instantly destroy what's currently the only launch pad on Earth capable of launching the space agency's astronauts to the ISS. To avoid that risk, according to SpaceX's Bill Gertzenmayer in a Flight Readiness Review, or FRR, for Crew-5 September 26, he said SpaceX has begun working on infrastructure to allow for crew launches from SLC-40 in Florida at Cape Canaveral. This hardware is already in work to prepare SLC-40. He further adds this is going to happen, starting with cargo launches from SLC-40 before moving on to the crew launch. It'll be ready in time for Starship. Besides, notably, he also said they won't bring Starship to LC-39A at Kennedy Space Center until, quote, we have a good and reliable vehicle. This means OTF flights will still happen at Boca Chica. Depending on how significant the facilities LC-40 would need are, there's also a chance SpaceX would need to complete a new FAA environmental review to construct a crew access tower. To be fair, one certainly can't blame NASA for worrying. In its latest iteration, SpaceX's Starship 39A launch mount will sit roughly 1,000 feet, about 300 meters east of Pad 39A's existing Falcon launch facility, which includes a tower and arm needed for astronauts and cargo to access and board crew and cargo dragons. The Starship mount is also around 1,600 feet, about 500 meters northeast of Pad 39A's lone horizontal integration hangar, without which Falcon launch operations would become far more difficult or even impossible. For the Falcon pad and tower, there is a slight consolation. Starship's own skyscraper-sized launch tower would be located directly between those Falcon facilities, and Starship before and during launches could partially protect them from any hypothetical blast. The hangar would be fully unprotected, however. NASA's worried that if a Starship fails before or shortly after launch and explodes at or near its adjacent launch mount, it could destroy or damage the infrastructure the space agency and SpaceX need to launch Crew Dragon to the ISS. At the moment, Boeing, NASA's second commercial crew partner, is likely a year or more away from its first operational astronaut launch, during which Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon would remain a single point of failure that could theoretically sever the space agency's connection to its own space station at any moment. After all, the script of the future of Starbase is 
I think it's well suited to be our advanced R&D location, so it's like where we will try out new designs and new versions of the rocket. I think Kennedy will be our sort of main operational launch site. In other news, SpaceX Crew-5 is also having some trouble, and at the briefing, teams identified two minor issues to look into further with both Falcon 9 and Dragon. One concerns bonds on a portion of the Dragon's perimeter, and the other is potential non-standard welds in the composite overwrap pressure vessels, or COPVs, which are part of the Falcon 9 propulsion system. Both issues are expected to be closed out in the next day or two, Gersten Meyer said. It's unclear if the weld concern even affects the Crew-5 Falcon 9, which will be flying for the first time, but it's possible, given that the issue popped up on other COPVs made using the same technique and or personnel. We've actually flown it in some other cases on some other rockets, and it's performed well, but that doesn't mean it's good enough for crew, he said of the weld. We've tested it already once, and it looks like it's satisfactory. We're going to review that data with NASA tomorrow. They'll take a look at it, double-check our work, make sure it's okay, he added. So I would say this is like a precaution that we're going forward with to just make sure that we're flying the best hardware we can. The Crew-5 Falcon 9 first stage was damaged during transport. I think it was fortuitous that the event occurred on the way to Texas, Gersten Meyer said. That allowed us to do all this work in Texas before we did the propellant loading test and before we did the normal static fire. So the rocket went through its normal full-up testing, post all the repairs to make sure that it's really ready to go. SpaceX's Crew-5 astronaut mission for NASA remains on target to launch next week, provided Mother Nature cooperates. I thought it was a very thorough review. That's from Steve Stitch, NASA's manager of the Commercial Crew Program. He said that in a call with reporters and said, quote, we're still on track for the launch October 3rd. The plan, however, is contingent on Hurricane Ian having but a minor impact on KSC, which is on the Florida Atlantic coast. If the storm nixes the attempt October 3rd, backup opportunities are available on the 4th, 5th, as well as the 7th and 9th. October 6th is out of play because of orbital dynamics issues. The Crew-5 astronauts will spend about five months aboard the orbiting lab before coming back to Earth. Ian, currently churning its way north through the Caribbean and its winds already lashing the Florida Keys, current models are predicting it will hit Florida's Gulf Coast particularly hard over the next few days, but KSC could be in the line of fire as well. Indeed, NASA's rolling its huge Artemis I moon rocket off KSC's Pad 39B tonight as a protective measure to get the valuable hardware safely inside the facility's vehicle assembly building. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Hey, don't forget, subscribe, press that like button, share your ideas in the comment section below because your support motivates us to create more quality video. Let's keep that hurricane in mind and hope nothing happens. And for that, we thank you so much and we hope to see you next time.